Space is extremely intriguing, and some theories of the things that happen there make us wonder more about it every day. Number 10. What was there before the Big Bang? We all know that things came to be after the Big Bang. But what was there before the Big Bang? It's believed that there was an initial singularity before anything else. This is a gravitational singularity predicted by general relativity to have existed before the Big Bang and thought to have contained all the energy and space-time of the universe. The initial singularity possessed seemingly infinite density, thought to have contained all of the mass and space-time of the universe before quantum fluctuations caused it to rapidly expand in the Big Bang and subsequent inflation, creating the present-day universe. Number 9. What happens when you fall into a black hole? With black holes being one of the most intriguing astronomical objects in the universe, it's no surprise that some people have wondered countless times what would happen if you fell into one. To fully appreciate what's a black hole, we need to first understand the properties of one. A black hole is a place where gravity is so strong that nothing else can escape. Black holes are named as such because they can't reflect nor emit light, and they're only visible when they're feeding on other stars or gas clouds that come too close to their event horizons. Their main boundary beyond the event horizon lies a truly minuscule point called a singularity, where gravity is so intense that it infinitely curves space-time itself. This is where the laws of physics as we know them break down, meaning all theories of what lies beyond are just speculation. If you were free-floating in space near a stellar mass black hole that wasn't feeding on anything, your only hint that it exists might be the gravitational magnification or lensing effect it would have on background stars. But as you flew closer to this strange spot, you'd be stretched in some directions and squished in others, a process that scientists call spaghettification. This is because the black hole's gravity compresses your body horizontally while pulling it like taffy in the vertical direction. If you jumped into the black hole feet first, the gravitational force on your toes would be much stronger than that pulling on your head. Meanwhile, if you were to plunge into a supermassive black hole, things would be considerably less scary. While it might still result in a horrible death, you might make it all the way through the event horizon and manage to start falling inside the singularity while you're still alive. You'll die either way, but at least things here will be a little less painful. Number 8. The Earth will become like Venus. Both Earth and Venus are very similar planets. They have very similar size, mass and composition, though their main difference is that Earth sustains life. And Venus is essentially a galactic wasteland because it's mostly composed of carbon dioxide. However, climate change isn't the only thing that might affect Earth becoming like Venus. As the Sun becomes 10% hotter, around 1 billion years from now, the surface temperature of Earth will reach 47 degrees Celsius, prompting the temperature of Earth to increase rapidly and its oceans to boil away until it becomes a greenhouse planet. A greenhouse planet like Venus isn't exactly the nicest place to live in the universe. Venus's atmosphere is almost entirely carbon dioxide and chokingly thick, with an atmospheric pressure at the surface 90 times that of Earth. That's the equivalent pressure of a mile beneath our ocean waves. It's so thick that you almost have to swim through it just to move around. And on top of this are clouds that are literally made of sulfuric acid. Number 7. White holes. We all know about the existence of black holes, but did you know that their distant cousins, the white hole, also exist? And if you think black holes are weird, white holes will literally blow you away. Instead of absorbing matter, white holes spew it out. To a spaceship crew watching from afar, a white hole looks exactly like a black hole. It has mass. It might spin. A ring of dust and gas could gather around the event horizon. But instead of absorbing things, they're belching matter out. Physicists describe a white hole as a black hole's time reversal. A video of a black hole played backwards, much as a bouncing ball, is the time reversal of a falling ball. While a black hole's event horizon is a sphere of no return, a white hole's event horizon is a boundary of no admission, space-time's most exclusive club. Number 6. Big Rip All good things must come to an end, and it seems like the universe is one of these. 
This is something established by the Big Rip, in which scientists have theorized that the universe could end up expanding so much that it will eventually rip itself to pieces. Solar systems, planets, asteroid belts, and even whole galaxies will be torn apart. Of course, that's something that will happen several million years from now, so it's not like we're going to be here when it does, but when it does, you can bet that things will not be pretty for humans. Number five, the Drake Equation. The Drake Equation is a formula that's been used to estimate the number of active extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. How many alien societies exist and are detectable? This famous formula gives us an idea. The Drake Equation, which was the agenda for a meeting of experts held in West Virginia in 1961, estimates N, the number of transmitting societies in the Milky Way galaxy. The terms are defined as follows. N, the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy whose electromagnetic emissions are detectable. R, the rate of formation of stars suitable for the development of intelligent life. Number per year. F, sub P, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems. N, sub E, the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life. F, sub L, the fraction of suitable planets on which life actually appears. F, sub I, the fraction of life-bearing planets on which intelligent life emerges. F, sub C, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that produces detectable signs of their existence and L, the average length of time such civilizations produce such signs in years. Number four, time is running out. Some scientists theorize that distant celestial bodies only seem the way they look because we're actually looking back in time to see them. That means that celestial bodies were moving faster in the past than they are now because time is slowing down. Even if we don't know how much it's slowing down, we know that it might slow down to a stop if things are left as they are. Number three, Hitler's opening speech. Did you know that the first signal broadcast strong enough to pierce through Earth's atmosphere was Hitler's opening speech at the 1936 Olympics in Berlin? That means that should aliens find Earth, that's probably one of the first things they'll mention to us when we communicate with them. It's probably the first sound they heard from humans. Number two, the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox, named after Enrico Fermi, establishes that there's a contradiction between the lack of evidence for extraterrestrial civilization and various high estimates for their probability, such as the Drake equation that we just saw. Alien life has to simply exist in one form or another. But if that's the case, then where are the aliens? The Fermi paradox establishes that it's much harder for life to exist than we originally thought, or that more life has actually existed and been destroyed over time. And number one, the universe is a computer simulation. If you've watched The Matrix, then put your tinfoil hats on, because the universe might just be like the movie depicts it. The simulation hypothesis, or simulation theory, is the proposal that all of reality, including the Earth and the rest of the universe, could in fact be an artificial simulation, such as a computer simulation. Moderator Neil deGrasse Tyson, director of the museum's Hayden Planetarium, put the ODS at 50-50 that our entire existence is a program on someone else's hard drive. He noted the gap between human and chimpanzee intelligence. Despite the fact that we share more than 98% of our DNA, somewhere out there could be a being whose intelligence is that much greater than our own. The main argument for this theory is based on the universe's laws. As the more scientists learn about the universe, the more they realize that it's very similar to a computer simulation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a like.